is good NYU. You are listening to the Silence Behind the Violets podcast. I'm Kyle. I'm here with my boy Kai, and I'm going to let him introduce who we are speaking with today. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Silence Behind the Violets. We are here with two members of New York University's women's basketball team. New York University's second-ranked women's basketball team, reigning UAA champs, sophomore Chloe Teeter, junior Honor Culpepper. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Very excited to be here. Absolutely. Actually, before we get started, before we get into this line of questioning, as promised, off camera. Oh uh, so head coach Meg Barber, uh, also an alum of the university, shout out, and she texted Kai and me on Monday afternoon saying, nice podcast, episode one, exclamation point, to which I replied, put your seatbelt on because we're going with Honor and Chloe on Wednesday. And then she goes, you can start it with Coach Barber said everyone is in for a ride. So oh that was a response. <laughs> Buckle that we up. Would tell. Exactly. Well, she's correct. You're all in for a ride. <laughs> all right. So um, as we were talking about, again, off camera, one of the first ca- questions that we have is, like, what was your welcome to college moment? So, the, you know, the pace of play and, and the strength of play is at college, especially, you know, on y'all's team and yours con- in your conference, it's, it's stronger, faster across the board compared to high school. So what was that welcome to college moment for you guys? I would say that mine happened in my sophomore year. So my freshman year, of course, was canceled for COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, So we didn't have any practices, didn't have any games. But then, you know, that just builds the anticipation so much. So, you know, the first fall pickups during my sophomore year were very intense. It was everybody, I think we had like 25 people at that Mm -hmm. point too. So it's not that everybody was like trying to be a captain, but everybody was just trying to like earn a spot on the team. Um, so it was super intense. Everybody was really fast, really strong. Of course, we're not going to call fouls and pick up. So I'd say right. that was like my like welcome to college basketball moment. Everybody yeah. was – it was just very intense and very scary, and people were yelling, and I just didn't expect that. But it's all worked out very nicely, and it's mm-hmm. calmed down a bit since then. But, yeah, that was my welcome to college moment. Yeah, I would say the same for me um, last year with, like, the first fall pickups. Um, just like realizing like I knew everyone was going to be really good but just like truly being able to see that like everyone there is like was the best player like on their high school team Mm -hmm. um and like everyone took it really seriously and even just like the running we would do if you were like subbing or something like we would do like sprints and stuff like that um even though like I remember I was like so tired after the first few games and then um they were all like all right everybody start like running so we can like be ready for practice but yeah I think just realizing like the intensity of it all and how truly like good everyone like was individually. I also remember yeah. we were at Stytown. Town. This is before fall pickup. So this is like we all just got to New York City. And we were playing like four on four and Belle Pelecchia scored every mm-hmm. single time she drove. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was yeah. like, still does. what am I supposed to, it still does. <laughs> and I was like, first of all, this girl's younger than me. Yeah. Like she's a freshman, I'm a sophomore. That was just like, all right, everybody's real, real good. Mm-hmm. I remember that mm-hmm. vividly. Yeah. Me too. It was like, at, yeah, I was yeah, like it was outside. Time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then outside of basketball, of course, been in New York for a couple years now. Um, Honor being from Florida, Chloe, a little closer from Jersey. Um, but along those same lines, like, what was your welcome to New York City moment where it was like, whoa, I'm here? Um, for me, I feel like I've had a lot of those. Um, I would always come to New York a lot when I was younger. But I think just definitely, like, first of all, learning like having to learn like the whole like subway and like grid mm-hmm. system which I still like I'm terrible at and like can't do <laughs> but I would say that um like getting lost and stuff like that like one time me and Belle were trying to come home from um Brooklyn and we ended up in Coney Island oh for some gosh. reason that's not close that's, that's like solid no, like hour and a it half it was like <laughs> yeah I have no idea how we took the opposite subway for that long yeah right, but concerning. um and then also I would say just like interacting with like other people like on this like streets and stuff sometimes like just like I would say like crazy things have happened with just you have to just like keep your wits about you which yeah any moments in which you remember um Chloe gets yelled at a lot yeah I, <laughs> <laughs> she's like a target for uh, for people yelling uh-huh. um well you get called names yeah <laughs> I've gotten like screamed at a few times uh-huh. um oh this, I had this guy on the subway to practice the, yeah actually this year um, this guy on the sub, I was go- taking the subway and this guy, I was like sitting on the subway and across the, um, like in the window, he was like waiting on the platform and we like stopped at Fulton street mm-hmm. and he made eye contact with me and ran up and started like banging on the door and saying he was going to like kill me. <laughs> oh so God. I would say yeah. that, um, yeah. Good recruiting tip. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Mine is more yeah. about Come on just, down. Yeah. Mine's more just about the weather. It's 
so cold here. Yeah. And I knew it was going to be cold, but I didn't realize how windy it was in the city. For some reason, I thought that the, the buildings would, would like block, block the wind, no, but the wind Washington Place, mm -hmm. um, or University Place, is a wind tunnel. That's why It is that. so cold. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely say that. Also, I do want to add that Chloe still does not know the grid system. Yeah, no. If you it's put her easy. in, if you put her in a I'm subway, better. she doesn't know okay. like which but the subway is what's now. going up, down, and downtown, which is how you ended up in Coney yeah. Island. Um, but it's okay. I'm always here to yeah. Guide I just her. follow on her. Yeah, I'd say the weather's been super cold. Um, just sort of learning to like walk everywhere. Mm -hmm. I wasn't used to that, um, but it's been kind of nice. Now I'll see something that's like a 35 minute walk, and I'm like, oh, it's like, short. <laughs> but if I was at home, I'd be like. Absolutely yeah, no, not. Well, you'd also be not. on the side of a highway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But. I feel that. All right. I mean, well, yeah, we talked a little bit about basketball. We talked a little bit about, um, you know, New York City. What drew each of you to NYU? And how did your recruitment experiences, like, compare, but then also contrast from each other's? Can I go first? Um, yeah. I would say for me, um, I wasn't really even, like, looking at NYU kind of towards the end of my recruiting process. Mm -hmm. um, I think, like they like started contact me contacting me like more towards the end like a little bit earlier on but like more towards the end um and then i kind of was just like visited the campus and stuff and i always knew that um like nyu was an amazing school but i like never thought that i could actually go to like such like a prestigious school i guess so when they started contacting contacting me i was like oh my god this is so exciting but definitely like going and visiting and then like realizing you know that it was so like beneficial to be so close to home like for me mm -hmm. and also just being in New York I think that definitely like made me really excited and also like meeting the coaching staff I remember thinking that they were like so awesome so I would say that definitely drew me. What was your first point of contact and like what were those conversations like? Um I don't remember the exact first point a lot of it was um they couldn't really see me in person mm -hmm. play because of COVID so they would watch film of me um and then kind of just go back and forth through like calls and text messages um but yeah I don't remember like the exact moment but I think they like might have sent me either an email or contacted like one of my high school or AU coaches um and then I was like oh my god the school's like so amazing I would like totally like love to like learn more about it and stuff so awesome. yeah yeah for me <clears throat> it was a little bit different I think some people look for colleges that are super close to home, but yeah. I wanted to do the opposite. I wanted to get out of Florida, go towards the Northeast, because both my brothers um, went to college up here. My oldest went to Syracuse. Uh, the other one went to Penn State, but is now at Toledo. But the theme is that everybody left home. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I didn't really know of NYU. Of course, I knew of NYU, but it wasn't necessarily on my radar until my senior year. And then I'm not really sure how we even got in contact, but I decided to take my official visit in like February of my senior year, which is late for an official visit. Um, and so I did that and I wasn't really thinking like this is where I'm gonna end up, but I did wanna, you know, see the city and see the school for the first time. And then I just totally fell in love with it. I thought all of the players were so nice, the coaches were great. Um, I got to see them play back when they played at Hunter College, yeah. which was weird. Um, I did think that that was a little bit strange, but then of course they were like, oh, Mercer's gonna be done you know, fingers crossed for the start of UAA play. But um, yeah, no, I totally just fell in love with the school and you know, you're not gonna get a better mix of like academics and athletics and you know, the amazing internship opportunities and just everything that goes on in New York. So I thought that um, once I got accepted, I was like, this is, I have to do it. And so I've loved it ever since. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you mentioned siblings that you have. Is that like you just have two older brothers? Or? Yeah, yeah, two older brothers play football. Uh -huh. Tita, do you have any? I have two younger brothers. Got you. So then were you getting any advice from like your older brothers like on the whole college front at all? A little bit. Um, it's just so different with like boys football and girls basketball. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they definitely told me that, you know, the cold's not that bad. Mm -hmm. You should come to the north, which I definitely took to heart. Um, but they didn't give me much advice on like what I should be looking for just because it's so different. They just wanted me to go somewhere that would make me happy. Mm -hmm. And then conversely for you being the old eldest, like mm -hmm. is there anything that you would probably tell them? Um, well, actually my younger brother's going through um, the recruiting process right now with basketball. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean the only thing I have just told him is just like be patient and not, you know, if something like doesn't go your way, it's like not the end of the world, like things always work out. Um, 
like that's what I like realized too like just kind of like being patient and just like waiting for things to, like play out like always like work so I just kind of have been telling him that but yeah I don't know I don't have much advice. Not solid advice for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, and then back to the basketball court a little bit um, last year Elite Eight run of course the first year playing for both of you just like what was that experience like I was fortunate enough to be there when, when we went to Michigan um, it was a blast you know playing in that arena going to a place that's even colder than yeah. New York um, and just being in a different environment. Just, yeah, just kind of talk to us a little bit about that. I thought the Hope trip was crazy. I did not expect that many people to be at a Division Three women's basketball game. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was so fun to be in that environment. It was also amazing to see how much all of the fans cared. But it's not just that they cared about like their own team. They would come up to us and be like, oh my gosh, you know, mm -hmm. how's the season been? How's the city? They were just so invested. And then it was the funniest little things that they thought were like the coolest thing. They were like, oh, well, have you checked out the, the heated sidewalks yet? We just got them like in downtown <laughs> or something. It was so funny. But then um, obviously they're an amazing team. So it was right. great to sort of, you know, play those girls and see that, you know, this is the top of, of women's basketball. And, you know, we had such a young team last year that even after the loss, it was like, that's going to be us next year because we can do that. We're just as talented. Um, we have just as many weapons as them. So I'd say it was definitely encouraging um, that they were so much, had so much more experience than us, but we were able to like hold our own. I just think that it speaks to where we're going in the future. Uh, but the Elite Eight run was amazing. I did, I, I never would have expected, you know, my first year of college basketball to have such a great result, but it was amazing. And, you know, we're going to go even further this year. Thanks. Yeah, I would say, too, just, like, as the season progressed um, and, like, you know, the game started getting, like, more competitive and, like, the pressure was, like, higher, it was, like, I just realized, like, how, like, I feel like it was so much fun, like, towards the end of the mm -hmm. year, like, all of our parents would always be there and, like, even when we'd, like, hang, like, after the Hope game, we, like, all hung out in the hotel and before the Hope game, like, all the parents would come and, like, they would all, like, line up outside and we would, like, walk to the bus, they'd all, like, cheer us on and, like, wave, like, purple yeah. flags and, like, confetti and stuff like that um so I yeah I feel like like as the season progressed last year just like the team like we all got so much closer and just like the traveling trips were really fun kind of like being with everybody and like having like all of our like fans and support like I think that was definitely my favorite part of like the season last year yeah and it was nice to sort of like prove people wrong because I don't think that we were like we were like in the 18th, top, like the beginning yeah, of the year. We weren't really near yeah. the top at the beginning of the year. Obviously, like a lot of other teams had been able to play during COVID or at least practice, even some of the UAA teams, and right. we weren't. So I don't think that people thought that, you know, NYU would come in and do as well as we did. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that it was really cool that we were able to sort of prove ourselves. Do you, and you can speak for the whole team, like, do you guys feel like you surprised yourselves last year? Or as that was kind of building, was it like, oh no, we, we got some? Um, well, I remember last year just, like, like I was thought it was cool when, like, I would see the rankings that kept, like, going up and yeah. going up. Like, we started off lower, like we were saying, and then I remember, like, every day of practice, you'd be like, okay, we're now ranked, like, 10th in the country, and now we're ranked, like, 6th in the country. And I remember being like, wow, we're, like, really good. Like, I, like that, I think, like, kind of, I guess, was just, like, cool to see, like, on paper, like, how good, like, our team actually was. But, um I don't think, yeah. I don't know if we surprised ourselves. I think that when we all came back together and started the season, we knew what we had and we knew how good we were. Um, but I would say I was definitely surprised from my freshman year um, before, you know, we got all the great, her class, everybody in that class yeah. was amazing. But I don't think that when I came here my freshman year, I expected the team to be as good as we were. But I would say, you know, once we actually started practicing and even just scrimmaging amongst ourselves, like we could tell that we were a special team and that we had the ability to go super far. Um, but yeah, I would say like going into the UAA undefeated was amazing. And from that point, we were like, you know, we're going to make it really far. We're going to still keep playing. We're not going to have a spring break, but that's fine because we're going to be mm -hmm. in the tournament. Yeah. Yeah, fair trade. I, yeah, that kind of kind of led into my next question. Like, what might there have been maybe a play, a moment, a specific victory, or even a stretch of games where you felt like, like, yo, we have something here? Or was it truly, like you described, like you both described it as, it truly was just that gradual? I don't know, maybe, maybe there was a turning point. I do remember our first loss of the season, Rochester. Mm. After that, we had, we played Emory um, 
was a whole ordeal. Our flight got canceled on the way from Rochester to Emory, but we eventually finally got there. And they were, I think, the like two or three ranked team in the UAA, and we beat them by 30. We were up by 40 at one point, but I think that that bounce back moment is really what we needed. Um, because we hadn't experienced a loss, we were kind of going like this the whole season. So I think just bouncing back from that first, you know, drop in play was really good. And then, you know, it obviously fueled us so much more in the rest of the UAA to go back and beat Rochester and, you know, remain undefeated so it doesn't affect our standings at all. But I would just say the ability for us to bounce back from that is what, for me, was like, you know, this is a really good team. Gotcha. Yeah, and even just like winning, like the day we won like the UA championship yeah. too, mm-hmm. like was so fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like when Sue Bird came to one of our games, oh, that was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, that was insane. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted yeah. to ask about. So Sue Bird was there. That, yeah, crazy. Yeah, so like mm-hmm. it, she came to the locker room, right? Yeah, you guys got to converse. But what, tell us like what was that? What, what that was like? I was like in shock. I don't yeah. necessarily Same. remember anything she was saying because I was just thinking about the fact that Sue Bird's in front of me. I mean, uh-huh. that's like go. Yeah, go, she's like go, the greatest go, basketball. It was insane. Um, I think she, what was she saying? She, <laughs> she was, yeah, literally, I like blacked Sorry, out. Sorry, Sue. <laughs> well, I, was like, I remember yeah, yeah, before, yeah. like before we were all in like the huddle, like at half court and everyone was like, Sue Bird's oh, here, yeah. Sue Bird's here. And I was like, what? Like, why would, like, no, she's not. Yeah. And then we went to the, like the, our like locker room. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then like, she just like walked in. It was, and we were all like free, like freaking out. Yeah. It was yeah, because I've, like, I mean, I would, like, she was, like, my favorite player when I was, like, in, like, middle school and stuff like that. Like, I would always, like, watch her and be, like, oh, my God. So I thought that was, like, insane. And I remember my dad said, um, he like, he didn't even know that she was there, and she, like, walked right past him. Yeah. And he just was, like, oh, my God, like, this, are you, like, Sue Bird? Like, what are you doing here? Right. But, you just think, yeah. like, how many Division three teams are going to have, like, one of the best WNBA players of all time to come into their Hello. locker room and speak to them? Like, NYU is just a great place, and our coaches have great connections, obviously. But that was an insane moment. Yeah. Well, Kai and I were speaking about it afterwards when we learned about that, when we were trying to – we were just wondering, like, not to undermine, obviously, the accomplishments and the lore and the brand that is NYU, but, like, we were honestly curiosity, like, what was the connection? Mm -hmm. So, like, what was that connection? Like, who knew who? I think think Nettie. Yeah. um, Nettie was, like, Miss Texas basketball, played at Mm -hmm. Vanderbilt, Mm -hmm. amazing player. I think that she – New Sue? Okay. Yeah, um, they didn't really tell us. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. either. But she tends to know a bunch of super good basketball players, so I think it was her. She I think I think she her. knows Meg too, though. Yeah. I think they're all friends. Yeah. 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 Would add up for yeah. sure. Math is mathing. Basketball world's small. Yeah, for it sure. Is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So you were just start- starting to talk about Coach Barber on that. So um, talk about playing for her. You know, really, what was your expectation? going into uh, playing for her and then like how's it actually played out I don't know if I had any expectations I was kind of mm-hmm. I mean I was definitely nervous like I don't know how a college basketball coach is going to coach what? um but yeah she's a great coach she won you know all the awards last year um I think that something she's really good at is preparing us for the games all of our coaches I mean they do they pull together great scouting reports but I would say that I've never gone into a game and felt unprepared and you know throughout my basketball career that might have been something that I struggled with before college Um, so I think they do a great job of sort of you know laying out you know this is how we're going to win these are the ways you know that we're going to stop them on defense is the ways that we're going to score on offense Mm -hmm. and that's just super helpful I think for me yeah um yeah I would say too just kind of like her you know showing like what's I guess like expected of us and stuff like that um and kind of just like the respect that like we all have of her like I think we all have such like a high level like of respect and like we like can just see just like the way that she like draws up plays and like the certain like the drills that we do in practice like everything's so like calculated and like you can just tell like how much she like truly knows about basketball and like how like educated she like is with that like I feel like um, even just like talking to her about it like outside of like practice and stuff like that just about uh, like other teams or like a random like game that's going on like just like the way she like sees the game is like so like advanced and stuff like that so yeah she I think she's like an amazing coach I will say I expected to be yelled at quite a lot yeah I think that that's something that you know you see in movies and everything with college athletics and she's not a yeller which has been great um yeah like she's (laughs) able to yeah like she's able to like still like we all like where she's still able to I guess like gain that like 
level of like respect like I was saying without having to you know like do the yelling and the screaming like, or like make a sprint and, yeah you know. like right. she's very like much so like we'll just if you like mess up or something she'll just like say like what you did and like what you need to work on but it's never like you never feel like oh my god like that was like so like she's very good about kind of um being calm and like making you feel comfortable and stuff like that I would say mm-hmm. gotcha mm-hmm. yeah well we were speaking with Spaith uh, like last I guess last episode and she was saying with women's volleyball that there was this like UAA banquet where they got to meet other I don't know about like other student athletes in general but other women's volleyball players and they were like oh my god like our perception of coach brown is that he's just so like scary like does he yell he's so intimidating with his suits and stuff that's all again front facing for me and kai that was funny to hear because yeah. we know him as this, like, this goofy dude yeah, yeah. I, but then ella or spaith she went on to say no but like he will communicate really well with you by talking things through with you as opposed to like at you or down at you so like i, I don't know have you ever heard like of any perceptions from anybody else about what they thought Meg would be like, or has it been kind of aligned with what the actual reality is anyways? I'm trying um, to think. I haven't yeah. really talked to other yeah. UAA players, but I would say maybe um, other uh, NYU athletes mm-hmm. who don't play basketball have said that she seems scary. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's not. She's not scary. <laughs> right, no. I agree. Um, Coach Barber, if you're watching this. <laughs> and we know that you are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we love you. For sure. Um, you know, just on the on the preparation standpoint, like there was one time where I was packing up here in this conference room and men's basketball was coming in to watch film. And they each had, you know, a printout or wherever it was. And I overheard a player saying like, number 35 on the catch and shoot, he's pretty good. But anytime he puts it on the floor, it's always one dribble left and he'll look to pass. Or if he ever goes right, he's always driving. Are there, like to get like super micro granular, like on a basketball junkie standpoint, like are there any like, I'm sure there is, but you know those types of of little things in the scouting report. Oh yeah, our yeah. scouts so, like, are. What, what might that sound like? Our scouts are very very detailed. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Coach Nettie and Coach Andy yeah. because they give us the best They're scouts. Amazing. Like you see the uh, you saw the boy scout. Ours is thirty times that. Yeah. So like, give us an example. We okay. So we know we like have yellow, red, or green shooters. Obviously, green right. best yeah. shooters, yellow. But then we'll they'll break it down for like, if this person's going right, this is what they probably do. If they're going left, this is what they probably do. You know, will they shoot over screens? Um, Just like little things, like the moves that they do, it's all super specific. And then um, they're really good at in-game adjustments too. So they'll tell us something in a timeout huddle and to like stop a certain player if they're going off or um, even like to stop a certain offense. But you know, everything is so detailed in the scouting reports and you know, it just speaks to the preparation aspect. Like we're, we always know when we're going into games what the other team is going to do and how we're going to stop it. Yeah, and like even I would say the people like, like 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 when you're on the bench like versus in the game like um like I know times like we'll like all yell like oh this person does this like watch this shot like cuz we all like like the scout is just so detailed. Um and even then like in pr- during practice when we're running like with the scout team and stuff like that like for each person um, like on the scout team that is like supposed to be another player like we'll do like we'll like do the moves that like that person will do and like our coaches would be like okay this person drives right like make sure you drive right on this player she shoots a lot so shoot as much as you can mm. um, so just like yeah I would say like everything just like they do such a good job of getting us really prepared yeah we know like all their stats hair color eye color <laughs> social security number yeah, yeah we have it all social media of course yeah. right any bulletin board material <laughs> I feel that, yeah. I mean, not to say, before we proceed, not to say that men's basketball isn't as detailed. That was just the one glimpse that I got, you know what I'm saying? So a little bit of backtracking. <laughs> I won't catch no strays. Um, no, for sure. That's super cool to hear about, especially as a little bit of a ba- basketball junkie myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but you mentioned last year it was, like, climbing the rankings, this ascent. This year, right off the bat, it, it was, I mean, you're on the map. Everybody knew, um, been top three all season, been number two for the past few weeks. Hope has been that number one team. So yeah. hopefully looking forward to a rematch <laughs> at the end of the year. But anyway, you know, high expectations this season, the whole time. So kind of how have you all managed those expectations? Does that affect what you do? Does that motivate you? How do you kind of approach that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely hard when you're, you know, at the top because there's really nowhere to go but down. But I think we do a really good job of just using that to build confidence. like. We have confidence every time we walk into the gym that you know we're the superior team. We have, you know, we're the most prepared. Everything like that. Um, so I think that we've done a really good job of sort of taking the rankings and running with them. Um, 
we all put in so much work during the season, out of the season. So I think it's really just kind of proof that, you know, our hard work has paid off and everything that we've started is coming to fruition. So I definitely don't look at it as a negative at all. And um, Coach Barber herself doesn't shy away from rankings. Like, it's not something that's not mentioned. Um, we like to know and we like to use it as a motivator and you know we know that we're going to get everybody's best shot mm -hmm. because we are ranked so high so I think that it helps us mentally prepare for games as well that like sure this team might have lost to this other team but when they come and play NYU we're their Super Bowl yeah, um, that's right. so yeah it definitely prepares us I think a lot too mm -hmm. yeah yeah I agree with everything you <laughs> said <laughs> Great. <laughs> there was one thing you mentioned about just like confidence level just walking into a gym that actually is one of the questions that we have so teeter like confidence level you walk into a gym you wear an nyu on your chest mm -hmm. right a figurative target on you all's back from a basketball standpoint of course but like what's that feeling like just knowing it and it's just like we're probably gonna hang 40 on their head and maybe not probably but just like we know that we can and there's a good chance that we will so like yeah confidence level you know given how yeah. strong the program is i would just say it like almost and it's like so nice almost in like a sense like not that it like takes like the pressure off of us I would say but like just knowing that like we have so like every time we go into a game like I'm just like okay we got this like we know exactly what we need to do we're all so prepared we've been practicing so hard like we're gonna be fine kind of thing I think it kind of just gives us like a little bit of a chance to just breathe just because we know like how much talent we have um and then also just because we are so good we're so deep so it's like so like we're able to kind of everyone's like kind of ab able to share everything like people all get chances to score like um obviously like individually we have like amazing players but like as a team like we like everybody can play like everyone's really good so i think kind of just um like even in practice too like when we play against each other like it's so competitive and yeah, people we go so hard and like um the practices are so much harder than the games just um because of our talent so i'd say that definitely like bring so much confidence kind of gotcha um and kind of speaking of improving right um what teammate do you think has improved the most over from last season to this and it could be one of the two of you but just curious about that i would say not in terms of improving because she's always been great of course. but i think that bell has really stepped up this year you know we're missing jordan which is such a crucial part of our offense i mean she was like at the end of last season, Jordan Janowski playing 40 minutes a game, she was unstoppable. So oh, I think yeah. it scared us all a lot going into this season, knowing that, you know, she's not playing. Um, but I would say, you know, Bell taking on that point guard role, she's really done a great job and is able to facilitate the offense and, you know, sort of play a position that she hasn't played before and she's doing it great. Mm -hmm. But I would, who else? Um, well, even like with Bell too, just like, she's so like stepping in like the leadership role and stuff like she's like a captain now and you know last year she was obviously like national rookie of the year but she was like still a freshman so I think a lot of times she you know didn't feel like it was her place to be as like vocally much of a leader but this year she's kind of had to you know like really step into that role and I think she's done like such a good job with that yeah um, Caroline I, Pepper yeah who's a freshman is playing amazing I mm -hmm. mean it's hard to make an impact your freshman year but she's doing great shooting the ball super well um Shout out to her. I feel like everyone's like yeah, improved. Everybody's doing great. Yeah. Like even in practice, like you know, it's always somebody's day, um, and it's never the same person. But yeah, I would just say in in general, I think that it's helpful to our coaches as well because you know we have a lot of depth. Um, yeah, I'd say yeah. Erica Miller is shooting amazing as always. Not an improvement because she's always <laughs> been a great shooter. Right. Yeah. Jenny and Bruns and the Post are doing mm -hmm. awesome. Brooklyn. Also yeah, stepped Brooklyn. up a lot because her she didn't yeah, start defense. last year, but is a starter mm -hmm. this year. She would be able to start anywhere. She's amazing. Yeah, she's definitely on defense, like shutting down some of the best players that we've played yeah. against. Um, she's just, I feel like Brooklyn never has a bad day. No. Like she's, she's always consistent, mm -hmm. like always, always doing does. exactly what she, you know, mm -hmm. has to do. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah, just making that right play. Yeah, yeah always. always. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, um, like on the iron sharpens iron front, like again, like just because it was our last episode, but like Spaeth, she talked about like, like listen, if I can block, or rather if I can get one past Lindsey Hirano, like I know I did something good, right? And so that's always cool to see in practice. And then um, going back to Bell, like just defensively, like we talk about offense, but bro, what? Yeah. Like picking up 94 feet? Yeah. Menace. She, well, I remember um, in pickup, 
like especially like when I was a freshman um the first time she ever like guarded me in pickup I was like yeah. it was like the most like scary yeah. thing Shook. I had like no Clamps. idea what to do yeah, right. so um I love when she like d defends people in the games and they have like no idea what's coming for them and like they get all nervous with the ball um because I'm always like I like no like she does this like she's so, such a good defender like mm. um yeah, so. Mm -hmm. And then Jeez. in practice, if you score on Bell, it's like, oh, it feels oh my so God. Good. Keep the ball. <laughs> the best feeling in the world. Yeah, I'm like, all right, I'm quit. I'm done. done. I'm for the my day. Jersey done off. for yeah. the day. <laughs> guys, yeah, literally. Well, it's, I mean, it's really hard to, to be such an impact defender or win a defensive player of the year award as a guard. Normally, it's the shot blockers. Mm -hmm. And what she did in the UAA last year, yeah. I mean, she just kind of, she puts her stamp on every single uh, possession for the other team. So it's also, always fun to watch. Like, um, college basketball like which I definitely had to make an adju adjustment to but just like learning how to like not foul and stuff it's so different <laughs> than like high school and AAU. Oh you've learned how. <laughs> <laughs> and she like she I was just so impressed with how like quickly she was able to kind of like just really like understand like how like different it is I guess in a sense like and just be so good with like playing such like hard like defense and like but not like really fouling and stuff like that like that was always something for me that I was like realized like that was something I like felt like I needed to work on more but yeah with her like I was just like she was able to pressure them so much but you know not get her hands on them and stuff so there yeah. was a game right before Thanksgiving that I was helping Kai with like stats at the table and um I mean, I'm not gonna put her on blast but there was this guard bringing the ball up and she just kept turning the ball over on Bell right like in the backcourt and um you know she wasn't able to really take those hits um that Bell like you know would body up on her and their coach was like, ref, like, she, she's fouling her every time. She's a really great defender, but those are fouls. And I was like, that's a weight room issue. That's <laughs> yeah, a weight room literally. issue. So, so, but then that actually leads into the next point. Like, she exerts obviously so much energy on, on, def on offense, but obviously as well as defense, the strength and conditioning component. Like, for mm. people that don't know, um, like, what, what does the strength and conditioning look like, like in the off season and then in season as well? Well, we have the best strength coach ever. Yeah. Shout out to Shout Brett. Shout out to Brett. Yeah. Love him. Yeah, great um, staff. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Everybody who's ever worked in the VPC is great, especially me. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, no, we, d we have a great strength program. It's very tailored to women's basketball. It's very tailored to the movements that we're going to have to make. Um, making sure we know how to move laterally, having a lot of power in our jumps. Um, and we all really enjoy it. I think there's a lot of teams that maybe don't like the strength and conditioning aspect but we love it yeah. um i think that whenever we can we're in the weight room and doing stuff like that even preseason this year which was the first time i had ever done it but we went to east river park at like 6 a.m and would do sprints and agility work which was amazing definitely got us ready um for the season but you have yeah yeah i was gonna mention like the conditioning we did um yeah I would say we all do like a really good job of getting prepared because even just um in the off season like pickup itself is like such like a big part of like our conditioning because we just all play so hard yeah. um but yeah I would say too like the strength and conditioning program is awesome here and it is like fun too like it's the workouts are like hard but um like they're they're just like such amazing like Brett is like so fun to work with and stuff so yeah and even if you say you know I see that this is the workout for today, but I, you know, my back really hurts. He has 10 other exercises that you yeah, can yeah. do that are going to target the same muscles, but, right. you know, it's going to alleviate some strain from your back. So everything's very tailored to us and basketball, and it's all super helpful. I think it's really cool how it, it goes to show, like, the focus and the clearly the success of the program. Like, y'all are talking about, the like, workouts, how it's great, and then a 6 a.m. run. Amazing. Like, we love it. Yeah. Um, but that just, yeah, goes to show definitely how locked in y'all are. Um, and it shows on the court for sure. Yeah, I would say a lot of us have experienced season-ending injuries, which is awful. And I think that it's given a lot of perspective even to the people who haven't experienced those in injuries, just, you know, how fragile the game is. And even if it is a 6 a.m. conditioning, like, just be glad that you're able to do it. Um, there's a billion people that, you know, wish they could play for NYU, wish they could play basketball, wish that they could be waking up at 6 a.m. and doing mm -hmm. these runs. And I think that we have a really good mindset of just, even if it's something that we don't necessarily love to do, like running a 646, which is our, like, conditioning test, mm -hmm. we're lucky that we're able to do it. We're lucky to be on this team. You know, we're lucky to not 
have a blown out knee and be Jordan sitting on the sideline, like she would kill to run a 646. So I think that that's a big motivator for us too, is to just, you know, do it for the people, you know, both on our team and off our team that don't have that ability. Yeah. Yeah. No, great perspective, for sure. Um, summer mornings, you talk about like those 6 a.m. runs. Summer mornings are just elite here. Mm -hmm. Makes you feel like it's uh, makes you feel like it's actually okay living in New York. Yeah, despite I was in the Atlanta this summer, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I wish so I was in New York. Got you. Yeah, feel that. Um, yeah. So we talked about a little about teammates there. Uh, we'll, we'll take it off the court though. Just like in terms of you, you two's closeness, like how did you two even become friends? And then if you could also <laughs> just give a peek behind the curtain of uh, what your first impressions of each other were. Um, well, we started, <laughs> we, I feel like we started becoming really close, um, like last, like J term -ish. We were like struggling at oh, the yeah. same time. So about this time? Yeah. I would say that, yeah. you know, like, despite, we <laughs> low. <laughs> despite all the positives, like obviously being on a college basketball team, there is stuff that's like really hard. And mm -hmm. I think that that's kind of, you know, we bonded over some of the stuff that we were, you know, struggling with and, um, yeah, I would say that's how we became friends. Yeah. But it w I would say we start. we didn't, like, not that we weren't close, but we got really close, I would say, kind of, like, yeah, J-term, honestly, yeah. or, like, winter break. Chloe was not my favorite person when we met. <laughs> um, she, <laughs> we, it's not that we got off to a rocky start. I just, you know, she, <laughs> we're very, very different, yeah. but, and I didn't expect us to, like, be as close of friends as we are. But then, you know, once we actually started hanging out outside of basketball a little bit more, we realized we have so many things in common. And, like, we like the same type of music. So I would play a Hamilton song, and she'd be like, oh, my God, I love this song. And then, you know, I'd play a country song, and she'd be like, you know this song? Um, which is yeah. rare, I'd say, rare. in New York. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes country music, which is ridiculous. It's I true. love country music. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we just had so many similarities that we ended up finding out, which got us a lot closer, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Are there any country songs you would put on the pregame playlist if you were? Yeah, I would, to, but everybody would, would yell at me. I would put top one. Top one. Joking. I would say, <laughs> I would say "All Yorn" by Tyler mm -hmm. Childers, really good. Mm -hmm. um, last damn song. Um, is great, but those are a little bit, you know, slow for warm up. I'm trying to think what else. Do you have any? Um. I don't know. I kind of like, I kind of like basic ones like "Chasing You" by Morgan <laughs> Wallen. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, we play them in the weight room, and yeah, like, how does that get received? Okay, some people love it. Okay, Belle loves it. MK loves it. Annie Carlisle pretends that she hates it, but then I see her in the corner singing all the songs. Setting a PR. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and she like will like tap her foot along. Right. Um, well, actually, Erica Miller yeah. hates it. Mm -hmm. Natalie yeah. Bruns hates it. They Jenny wish likes it. they wish that we were just playing EDM the whole time, <laughs> oh which is gosh. no, we're not going to do that. Those are two extremes. Yeah. 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 Well, I remember too the first like the first pickup game we ever had. Um, Honor and Jordan had like the speaker and you guys started playing country music and everyone was like, why are we listening to country music? And I was like, oh, I kind of like this. Yeah. I was like too Jordan, scared to we, say anything. We were like, so. well, we don't care, we're playing it. That's, that's typically yeah. the mindset. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no country on the pregame playlist as of now, but it's gonna be added. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll someday. 181 speakers. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll we, we've we've also started <laughs> liking British rap yeah, so yeah. yeah, I'm with you. British right? rap. I'm with you. So we added "Dance with W I V Me" <laughs> onto the playlist, which is okay. you know a crowd pleaser. Yeah. But when it comes on during playlist, like I can't help myself but dance. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> Word for the next function. <laughs> Solid. Um, well, off the court, obviously New York. There's a lot, a lot of opportunities, a lot of cool stuff to do. Honor interning with CNN. We're definitely. Um, want to hear more about that and also a sports editor for Washington Square News our uh, student newspaper here at NYU but you know what do you do at, at CNN and kind of how how did that come about yeah so it started this summer I went to Atlanta um, at the CNN headquarters there and I was with the sports team so I basically got to experience producing live TV shows writing scripts um, you know just helping out with the production of CNN sport which was absolutely so, amazing mm -hmm. I learned so awesome. much um, I was able to work with like some of the coolest anchors ever and they sort of took me under their wing I would say what drove me to do that is it's been 
like my dream to be a sideline reporter, like a sports reporter mm -hmm. somehow. So that's what sort of introduced me to the world of journalism and reporting. And then I had the opportunity to work with the CNN opinion team this fall, which was more editorial. So I would, you know, fact check things, copy edit other people's writing, sort of see if I could think of any new angles for CNN opinion to take, um, which has been absolutely amazing as well. I think it's made me a, a, a better writer. Yeah. Um, I was able to work on one project where we did like a reader call out. So people wrote into us about what was important for them in the upcoming midterm and I had to like sift through these responses and sort of put them together mm -hmm. in a you know neat and precise way which was amazing but yeah it's just it speaks to NYU um, as a school that I was able to get these internship opportunities um, but yeah they've been absolutely amazing and then for Washington Square News it seems that sports are a bit forgotten at NYU so I kind of wanted to shed some more light on how good we are and how many yeah. amazing stories there are within the athletics program. So um, Sean and I, you know, Sean. Shout out to Sean, out our play-by-play -play announcer. We yeah, love you, Sean. He's great, but we are both the editors of the sports desk. So we sort of help the writers um, with, you know, what games are going on, how they can write about a certain game or a certain player. And I think we've done a good job of sort of highlighting NYU athletics mm. a little bit more. and more to come obviously it's both of our first years um, with Washington Square News but it's been amazing and it's nice to sort of shed some light on these athletes because yeah. you know we are really good at like across the board at each sport we do and people don't necessarily realize that but mm -hmm. I think that they should yeah for sure um, and you mentioned like a dream always to be a sideline reporter was there a, a moment that sparked that a certain sideline reporter like that inspired you right. something that kind of just made that click well, love Erin Andrews. She's like the best. But I would say what really sparked my interest, my brother went to Syracuse and he went mm -hmm. to, um, he was in the Newhouse Communication School. And so he would, he doesn't want to be a um, reporter of any, anything like that. He's in law school now. But he, a lot of his friends were on the reporting track and he said, you know, Honor, I think you'd be great at this. You are a good public speaker. You like to hear yourself talk. So you might as well see if this is something that interests you. And yeah, I kind of took that with and ran with it. And then, you know, being with CNN Sport over the summer, they let me go into the recording studios and like have a whole setup, read off the teleprompter and do like a segment. And I absolutely loved it. Um, but now I'm kind of thinking that I'm also going to go to law school. So we'll see. You might catch me on the sidelines. You might also catch me in the courtroom. Options. <laughs> Solid. Options. <laughs> Solid. Um, Teeter. So. Uh, nursing major, is that still the case? Yes. Just want to make sure that the mm -hmm. bio is up to date. Um, <laughs> nursing is tough. Like the nursing mm -hmm. major is very difficult. Um, obviously, tremendously rewarding, but it's really difficult along the way. Growing up Filipino, everybody in my family was like, God, are you going to be a doctor or a nurse? And I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm going to be a social media manager at New York University Athletics. That's but, always uh, <laughs> the dream. <laughs> mm. I mean, well, actually, no, to your point, Honor, about like sports being a little bit forgotten here, like half jokingly, our NYU Athletics IG bio is, yes, we have sports no, teams. Not you even half-jokingly. I mean? Yeah, like for Nobody real. Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. Genuine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So anyways, going back to the nursing mm -hmm. front, um, Teeter, the same question that we asked Honor, you know, was there any way or was there any time in which you kind of felt like inspired to, to go that route mm -hmm. or anybody like any figures in your life that, you know, maybe maybe there was a little bit of an influence? Yeah, definitely. My like on my dad's side, um, I have like a ton of aunts. Um, and his mom, mm -hmm. so my grandma, um, are all nurses. Um, they all work like worked for Columbia Presbyterian, and also my step grandpa was a doctor at Columbia Presbyterian. He's an anesthesiologist. Oh. So kind of just like growing up, it was oh like we were always talking about like whenever we'd go to family parties, like they would all talk about their like experiences and like specifically like my grandma too. Like she just always like amazed me with how much knowledge she had about everything. Like every time like any one of us had like a problem we would like always call her like still to this day like if like something's wrong I'll text her and be like oh this is going on like what do you think's wrong with me and she'll be like take this take this and I and I always just was like that's so cool that she can hear like symptoms and just like be able to like diagnose it um and like you know each like pre person in my family they all like worked at such like an interesting like level too like my grandma was like in like the neuro ICU so she saw like a lot of like you know people that were like you know going through like insanely like crazy things 
Um, and then my other aunt works like on like pediatrics and stuff. So kind of just like seeing them and just seeing like how dedicated they were and um, how much they just know about like everything involving like the human body and like stuff like that. Like I just thought was so cool. And I always kind of like wanted to do that when I was younger, but I was like, oh, maybe I'll like, you know, try something else. Like, I don't know if I want to do that. And then, yeah, once I got to college, I was like, this is definitely something that I could see myself doing. I feel like you care about everyone. Like, yeah, <laughs> like deeply. Yeah. And so I feel like that's yeah. important, you know, definitely for being a nurse. Yeah. Be. yeah. Well, yeah. what I think is cool too with nursing is it's like something that affects like every, like every single like person, like, you know, it's like everyone has like the same like body and stuff like that. So like everybody like, and, like I don't know how to, like explain it, but like everybody, I guess is affected by like you know, medicine and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I just thought that was something else like cool too. Like I could you know, help like everybody kind of thing. I guess. So. Mm-hmm. Well, when yeah. talking about like your family and those conversations that you have had, I was thinking about like recovery for you both. Um, a What's the recovery room like? Like, cause like I've poked my head in, but I haven't normied myself mm. uh, last few months. But um, yeah, so recovery room, what that's like, and then also like your overall recovery process because the UAA, as we talked about um, previously, like the scheduling is also another component. Forget the travel, just yeah. like two two conference games on a weekend. It's typically at least like in the Northeast, um, you know, New England specifically. It's like. Right. Saturdays. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Um, recovery room and then, like, what recovery looks like for you both. We're actually headed to the recovery room right after this. Yeah. It's great. Um, honestly, I wish that we've had the recovery room since my freshman year, but I'm very happy to have it now. Mm-hmm. There's, like, four reclining chairs in there. The Normatec boots, Normatec hip mm-hmm. attachment like things. The arm there's the arm mm-hmm. sleeves. There's um, massage guns, a bunch of different things to roll out with. And... It's only for the athletes, which is great. Um, we don't have a lot of other resources like that, but right. no, it's a great idea. Um, I think it was Thomas Pritchard. That's right. Who, I was just going to shout yeah, him out. Yeah. Sh- amazing idea. He's done a great job, and um, you know, I'm really happy that it's open. We use it all the time. Yeah. Just like even sit there and mm-hmm. get homework done mm-hmm. um, in the boots, S- you know, place. multitasking. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, recovery room is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what we're always in there. Travel recovery. Travel recovery is yeah. hard. Like when we're on away trips, um, we bring the boots. We bring the boots. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it is hard. I would say. I mean, we'll do stretching. Like when we get off a bus or like a plane, um, our whatever trainers with us will like we'll all like sit in like a hotel conference room and like we'll do like a stretch, mm. <laughs> which is nice. It's so funny. It's but, so goofy. um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we like do a good job of trying to like keep our bodies like rested and stuff like that um we've done a lot this like first semester to prepare for it um usually we don't have like back-to-back games but we've had a couple pre uh pre uaa play so we're kind of ready for you know travel on thursday play on friday travel on saturday Mm -hmm. play on sunday which is a lot um but we're prepared for it especially with the way that we practice like we're not really taking practice days off like each time we practice my whoop tells me my strain's pretty high. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'd say that, you know, it's just what our bodies are used to since October 15th. Mm. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, whoop if you're listening. And whoop I if you're deal. listening. And please we know that sponsor you are. me. I did <laughs> yeah. a final project on whoop as well. Oh, so wow. What was I'm that like, about? It's for a PR class. I basically Uh pitched that WHOOP should sponsor the NCAA Final Four because it's hosting Division I, II, and III women's teams. So it'd be great, like, for WHOOP to do a custom band for the teams. Um, Yeah, if they're watching this, you can pay me for that idea, too. That's facts. I'm going to tag them. No free content. Yeah, 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 no, please do. (laughs) Clip it. We'll clip it. Emily, you know what to do. (laughs) Solid. Kyle, you got anything else? Um, I guess... Kind of any reflections on the first semester, what you're most looking forward to, second semester, UAA, travel, like you mentioned. Um, yeah, looking ahead. Um, well, kind of on a side note, like, I feel like just, um, you know, like what we were saying with the cover room, I feel like, like the athletics community, like, has gotten so much better. Like, the social media, like, you guys have been doing, like, the edits, the edits so like, cool. yeah. everything's, like, gotten so like the recovery room like I feel like everything's just like on the up and up yeah just like advanced like so much like not that last year like it wasn't like that but just like 
even like our own Instagram, like stuff like that, like people are, I think, doing a really good job of like show, you know, putting more attention on athletics, like we were saying. But that's something that's been like exciting for me, like getting to like watch like yeah. the like edits after the game, like the men's team edits are yeah. like insane. I don't know who, like, Bangkok buckets. She's great, so but good. I think it was the other men's team like video editor who did that transition of like Seti Wu on the court dribbling and then it like was the clipboard. Oh yeah. my god. That was yeah, yeah, so yeah. that was really cool. Yeah, like, that I've never John. seen that. John, you're killing it. Yeah, so shout out cool. to John. Great. That was amazing. Um, yeah. yeah. It's been really are, fun to watch. Like, yeah. All of those. Ours have been great too. Mm -hmm. uh, What's cool is that there's a there's a student as well as a couple others that like really wants to do like a lot more docu series type stuff, mm. and he just shot a ton of content with the men's team for that first episode. The women's team will be the second episode. Yeah. And so while he did want to travel with you for some stuff during the winter break, it's eventually gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Where you know at whatever point that he is shooting, I mean he shoots in 4K and a bunch of different mm -hmm. like cameras and stuff. Yeah. Um, mic'd up interviews and stuff like that. We'll also mic you up during mm -hmm. practice as well. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to oh, that. Oh gosh. Yeah. I know exactly. Yeah. I don't know what I say <laughs> during practice. So we'll see. We'll see who, who's the best match for yeah. that. But no, the uh, I think Teeter to your point about like the presence being stronger this year. Honestly, it was something that Honor you mentioned earlier. But about this year, honestly, just being more of a conventional year. Mm -hmm. Right. Last year yeah. was really wonky. Like, not only were Kai yeah. and I in a third north basement, the third north basement, um, and again, like, masks are always welcome, but, like, it was definitely different just being masked up, isolated away, and, you know, we didn't really get to connect with you guys, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. like, Kai and I, we were kind of just, like, at least with the student athlete community, what felt like ships passing in the night, where it's like, you know that, like, somebody's putting the recap up, you know that somebody's hitting posts on those posts and that somebody's scoring buckets, but, like, we didn't really get to interact mm -hmm. with you all. For and sure. so I think a lot of that, Honestly, for me and Kai, was just making more of an emphasis during media day to just have more of a presence for yeah. that. Yeah, like yeah. the new York, new, new yeah. uniforms are like awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. The entire, yeah. the entire right. new like, your brand. brand. Yeah. yeah, and it yeah. really yeah. took the uniforms to bring it to life because it's mm -hmm. like when we rebrand, but we kind of didn't have that yet. Mm -hmm. It felt a little detached. But to Kyle's point, I mean, last year, yeah, like the two of us too, we're still getting our feet under us, you yeah. know, starting this job, yeah. and now we're, I mean. We started you a podcast. Yeah. We're doing these different things. So you know, we're just amazing. more comfortable. We know what's what's to come. But and it's um, definitely noticed by all the students. Yeah, athletes. we always like talk everybody about everybody in and out of the VPC in and out of the training sure. room has noticed everything. So right. shout out to you guys. It's been awesome and very happy to have been on this podcast. Episode two is the best episode. <laughs> Means yeah. a lot. Or Means wait, a lot. Are we for episode, sure. three? episode three. Oh, yeah. Episode shout three. Out shout out Spade. This is good Ow. too, but <laughs> we're not as good as ours. Uh, but oh, definitely want to give a huge to to that point. I mean, a huge shout out to our entire creative team, our entire student staff, Absolutely. our game day staff. Um, it kind of like you know do a lot, but a lot of it also is just overseeing the the awesome work that our students are doing too. So shout out to them. Yeah, some of it is just like you know like what you wanted to do anyways for free. You don't want to hop on payroll, yeah. and then that's it. Like, just let them do their thing. I think that's a big thing for me and Kai. Like, we're products of people that really trusted us, yeah. and so we just want to trust our students, whether it be, um, you know, student athletes themselves to come on and, and go ahead and speak, or obviously the student staff where it's like, yo, like, what do you want to get out of this? Yeah. Right? Like, think about how this came together. Like, we just posted the first episode clip of me and Kai stating, hey, like, we're really excited to launch this podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, who was it, Teeter, you commented first? Or no, Honor, Honor, I commented, Honor commented, commented first. Book at I, yeah, Chloe Teeter. Please, PLZ, <laughs> to which Chloe replied, why don't you book both of us? And I was like, facts. And then it legitimately was just a direct message. So <laughs> yep. the DMs are open at NYU mm -hmm. Athletics if you want to schedule your next booking. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it. That's all I've yeah, got. Yeah, no, this yeah. has been a lot of fun. Thank you guys sure. for having thank us. You. Yeah, thank you guys. So uh, at NYU Women's Hoops is where you can follow the team account. You can follow their personal accounts. I'll just put that in the description. Just listen to the Silence Behind the Violets, Episode 3 in the books. Appreciate you all. Thank you.